Okay, we're back. We're live. It's 2 o'clock block, and uh, this is Community Matters. We have a special show about a special program. Am I right? That's Parina Poon. She is the president of the Hong Kong... Business <laughs> Association. Hong Kong... Business, Business Association. Association. It's a very Hawaii. active organization here in Hawaii, Nei, right? Yes. And uh, she has a program we're going to talk about in a minute. That's, and that's Jerry Sumita. Uh, Jerry Sumita Sorry. is a principal at Carl Smith Ball, and he is one of the founders, I get this right? Yes. Right. Of the Hong Kong Business Association, which is HAKBA. Right. HAKBA. H K B A H. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So on the 25th, which is only, mm, oh, gee, that's mm, two weeks. Ten days. Less ten, ten days yeah. away. Yeah, yeah ten. Well, it's going to be this program at Lani Akea, which you've organized. Right. And it's about, it's about uh, Hong Kong and China. It's about uh, trade. USA. It's about business. It's mm -hmm. about all the things we need to be concerned about here in Hawaii. Um, and that's really to your credit that you're presenting this program. But we're here today to find out why and what. We know, we know how. Well, we don't know how. We'll find out more about how. <laughs> we know where. We know when. It starts on... What, Sunday night the 24th, there are some events. Yeah. And then it goes all day and all, all and through the evening on Monday the 25th yes. of February. Yes. Okay, why, are, why are you doing this, Marina? Um, okay, this is my uh, thinking at that time before I started it. Um, I was, uh, as you know, you saw the TV all the time about the China and U.S. trade had conflict. Yeah, so people call it trade war. But I don't want to call it a trade war, but it's a conflict. So um, back and forth. And I thought that it's put us, uh, a U.S. resident or, or, or businessman, um, it, it's just in a very odd po position. So especially like China. If you want to do trade with China, that puts yeah, it on. Yeah, a, a lot of trade is with China. Actually, you will be surprised. May not be Hawaii, but yeah. a lot of trade. But Hawaii should be interested. Hawaii should know about these things. Yes. Participate at least in the conversation. Yes. So, um, and I thought that because also I am a Chinese uh, immigrant from Hong Kong, and I also, I also thought it's put us in an awkward position because of they've been fighting for the trade. So I hope that we can put in a program so everybody have a dialogue so we can talk about it and hopefully we can find a solution, you know, um, to, 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 you to do this. You have a chock block program here. I mean, you have speaker after speaker. I know. You have a real, you know, this is a, a, we a have actually parade eight, of talent. Yeah. Eight uh, out of town speaker. Three of them are directly from Hong Kong, and five of them is flew from a U.S. mainland. Yeah. So, so when we do a show uh, mm -hmm. or a movie, we always ask ourselves, what is the takeaway? What takeaway do you want people to get from this program on the 20th? Yes. It's very clear that um, we have two, two sides of it, morning and the af afternoon. The morning side, we are focused on the U.S. and uh, China trade. Uh, policy and relation. So hopefully that the audience or the participant will learn and or participate in the dialogue and conversation uh, after the, the panel they uh, addressed it. And hopefully that we can find a common solution to solve at least the Hawaii and Hong Kong China problem, yeah. not necessarily the national problem, yeah. right? So we cannot control. But in the afternoon, it's a practical business advice uh, by all our uh, uh, speakers, Which is including Gerald Sumida. <laughs> I would I would expect nothing less. <laughs> yes, and, and we're going to talk. We're going to talk about that okay, in a minute. Okay. So um, this, and you're calling this the 2019 U.S. Hong Kong China Forum. Mm -hmm. It's not the first one. No, it will be no, the last one. No. No. Um, interestingly. The first one we, we did is called uh, U.S. Hong Kong Forum 2010. The second one uh, in 2014, we called it Hong Kong China Forum. Now we put that two <laughs> together, <laughs> right. U.S. Hong Kong China Forum. So I, I, what I gather from what you say is, you know, right now we have this trade, what did you call it, conflict, trade conflict? Yeah. No, not a would, war, but a conflict. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and business people who might otherwise deal with China might be yeah, you know, intimidated skeptic. by yes, that. Yes. Uh, they may not want to you know, go there or, mm -hmm. or they might want to hedge their bets, so to speak, mm -hmm. 
because of uh, who knows what's going to happen about the trade conflict. So you're prob I think you, what you're saying is you're offering advice to them on what kind of expectations they should have and what kind of moves they should make. Uh, to to better engage uh, with trade I, with China. Yes, I, I, I thought that through our dialogue, maybe they can find a way to manage it, at least if it's not a solution. To give them comfort, to give them advice, yeah. to give them solutions. That right. is your word, solution. Right, <laughs> solution. <laughs> yeah, that's what... Who should come to this program, Marina? Oh, everyone interested in the um, uh, international relations, the first thing first. And second is anybody interested in uh, Hong Kong, China and, and U.S. trade um, and business, how to learn the other side. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully that we can present our side to the other side better too. <laughs> one, and one more question that we need to ask you is this is, this is the Hong Kong Business Association, mm -hmm. HACBA. Right? Mm -hmm. But why Hong Kong? and not China itself. Why, why isn't there an organization sort of like yours, but is based, which is based in China, in Beijing, Shanghai, uh, that would put this program on? Wouldn't we get a, a more direct connection that way? It's a good question. Um, since I only affiliate with Hong Kong Business Association, uh, so, uh, so obviously I will do that. If I have another organization affiliate, maybe I will suggest the other organization, why don't we put on this? Yeah, okay. Yeah. We do what we can. Eh? Yes, yes. <laughs> What's the website that people should... I'm well, sorry, Jerry. No, I was going to say, also remember, though, that, that historically, when trade with China began to develop after normalization, Hong Kong was looked upon as a gateway. Mm -hmm. And even China looked upon Hong Kong as the way in which both to bring in foreign direct investment and business, as well as for China ultimately to go out into the broader world. Mm -hmm. Now Hong Kong is a little bit less strong in that particular regard, and you talk about Beijing directly, Guangzhou, Shanghai, etc., other cities in China. But Hong Kong has always been a pivotal role and uh, really still is in many cases. If you look upon the the internationalization of the RMB as a currency, Hong Kong is partly the site where they're trying to build up that particular foundation. So when the Hong Kong Business Association of Hawaii was first established, part of it was because of Hong Kong's strength itself, but also part of it was as a gateway into China. So. At this point, as Brina indicates, you know, there is a U.S.-China Business Council based in Washington and, and so forth. But from the Hawaii perspective, uh, the Hong Kong Businessmen Association or Business Association of Hawaii, or HACPA as you call it, really has been the focal point, And it's just expanded the program now, rightly so, into sort of greater China. Okay, so, let I'm me, so let, glad to bring him here. Well, let me, let me add this, though, Jerry. My perception, mm -hmm. you can agree or not is that Hong Kong, what, whatever uh, Peking, has, I mean Beijing has in mind um, about the future of Hong Kong, um, the people in Hong Kong want to continue as the gateway to China. That's their aspiration. Mm -hmm. And they feel strongly about it because that's the way it's been for hundred some odd years. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, de facto, they deliver a lot of foreign investment into China. And they organize uh, investment arrangements that happen in China. So they're very well equipped and they're very active right now and they want to do it, they want to continue to do it forever uh, into China in the future. Now there are those um, leaders in, in Beijing who may not feel that way. They, they uh, from time to time, uh, I read uh, Frank Ching, you know Frank Ching uh, mm -hmm. uh, in the, uh, what is the Wall Street Journal uh, in, out of Hong Kong, I think. Um, you know, from time to time you see little points of resistance by Beijing and say, no, you, you stay there, Hong Kong. We have our plans for Hong Kong and you are not the masters of your destiny. We are. Um, but, but that may or may not carry because the real momentum here is that Hong Kong was, is, and to a large extent will continue to be the gateway business-wise to China. Am I right? Partly. Partly. <laughs> okay. I, I, I think now what, it, what has happened, quite frankly, is that you've got direct lines to other parts of China from the outside. And that, that's not just North America, but also throughout Asia and in Europe. So Hong Kong is in an evolving situation, to put it nicely. Uh, you do have the 
you know, uh, uh, two systems, one country approach, which some people would deem to be eroding within Hong Kong. Uh, Singapore has looked very much as a potential counterpoint, if not uh, rival Better. to Hong yeah. Kong. Yeah. So we're in a state of, of flux. Uh, Hong Kong still is a major way in, but it's not exclusive. And as you know, right across the border, there was a, now a metropolis of Shenzhen. Previously, it was just a relatively small village and now it's one of the largest, larger cities in Almost China. And it has and direct connections right. and with right. everywhere in the world. And that's yeah. right, and it's developing into a, a, an IT and an AI powerhouse. Mm. So, we'll have to see numbers. Yeah, he, we'll he's numbers really, this, really you know. right. He has a lot of knowledge on right. that. You'll yes. be talking about these things in the program, right? Well, it, yes, he will be. <laughs> he will be one of our speakers, and you actually will be our. Uh, Moderated. Yeah, I, I want to yeah. moderate the, the panel on one belt, one road. That's yes, what I want to yeah. do. Yes, yeah. Thank you. So, what is the uh, what is the website where people can see the detail of this program? Um, actually, um, they can go on the Eventbrite, which is uh, the one that I, we put on for registration. Mm -hmm. So they can go on the 2019 U.S. Hong Kong China Forum. Dot Eventbrite. Dot com. Okay, 2019 Hong, uh, U.S. Hong Kong China, China Forum. Forum. And here's a picture of what you will find. It's <laughs> fairly complete. A lot of activities. This yeah. is the, I'm showing you the picture of the From activities for the 25th. Yeah. And this one is for the evening before. Plenty of activities uh, yes. on the 24th it's, in the evening. Yeah. It's a Chinese New Year gala plus our organization 23rd anniversary plus a welcome dinner to our hour of time guests. <laughs> yeah, come here for choy. Also. Xinyan Kuai Le. Oh, Xinyan Kuai Le. Ah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jerry, I want to talk about our panel, okay? Okay. Um, so we have a panel on One Belt, One Road, which is a, bit, a piece of fascination for me mm -hmm. in terms of, um, you know, Chinese policy. And it is being played out. It was announced, what, not too long ago. It's being played out now in, in, with great speed and robust energy. Everything coming out of China is robust energy. Um, and we, we have a panel to discuss this. So what's the takeaway from our panel? And then we'll talk about the detail. Well, we haven't had the panel yet, so we're not quite sure. <laughs> but, but, but as you see it now. Well, as I see it now, first off, one of the questions is, and you're right, one belt, one road, BRI, as is now more formally called or informally called, uh, is a subject of major interest, both um, positive as well as skeptical, depending on which circle that you're talking about. But it is, from one perspective, a very visionary, long-range program, plan, initiative, really, to create or recreate or enhance two major trade routes from really the western part of, or the eastern part of China all the way through into Europe. One, the northern, so-called northern route, and one, a sea based route, the southern route, maritime route, which will cover almost all the countries in the world with the exception of North America, directly anyway, it even penetrates into Africa, and it is supposed to encourage trade and along that economic development uh, and prosperity along those trading routes. And it is not just trade, but if you take it in its fullest uh, explained extent, it's international customs, use of artificial intelligence, transportation networks, power plants, other kinds of infrastructure, so forth and so on, throughout all of those countries. And investment. And, in, and investment. Large investment. Very large investment and a very long time frame. Okay, that's mm -hmm. one side of it. On another side, it's a question of um, whether or not, in effect, it is China seeking to spread its geopolitical strategic plans throughout all of that area and essentially rival North America, in short. Well, and there, are, and there, and there are also both financial, international financial, as well as national financial and geostrategic military implications that have been drawn from a lot of this. So it's not a road, actually. <laughs> not, no, not a, a road is, 
We would know it. A route, perhaps. <laughs> and it's not a belt either. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's an idea. It sounds to me, like from Xi Jinping's point of view, it's a great idea. This it is. It's an idea whose time has come for China. Well, yeah, possibly for, for China too, although um, it is visionary. You have to take that very much into account. And it's been compared somewhat to the Marshall Plan, although quite frankly the two are quite different, both in terms of, of historical context and also in terms of objectives. I mean, this is a long-range infrastructure plan to assist China and its economy. Well, but there are, there are challenges, there are problems, there are potholes on the road, so to speak. And one of them I keep reading about is, uh, is the reaction, uh, the pushback uh, mm -hmm. that China gets when it uh, encourages a large infrastructure project. It makes huge loans. Next thing you know is the, the host country can't pay the loan back and China winds up owning the project. And this could be a, a strategic, critical, strategic, important project like a harbor. Um, right. And so how, I hope we are going to discuss that in this panel. It should be discussed <laughs> and come up because that is, that is an issue, there is pushback. And one of the questions, quite frankly, is, you know, to what extent is all of this a, a clearly thought out and systematically implemented geostrategic political policy of the Chinese government or how much of this is a broad initiative with a lot of different kinds of players with some ways of doing things that really are not necessarily or have not been thought out, but end up with uh, a few very difficult situations such as the pushbacks you've been talking about. Yeah. I mean, most of these, these projects are loaned projects. They're not grants, they're loaned projects. And they're major infrastructure projects so you're talking about railways, bridges, dams, harbors, port facilities, so forth and so on. And the basic idea is that a project is decided upon in a particular country, and supposedly as part of the BRI initiative, I uh, will build and enhance to that. Uh, a loan is made for the project. Sometimes it's 80% um, of the project cost, sometimes a little bit less, but 20% equity, 80% loan is, is relatively standard. Um, the loan is made to the government. The government uses the loan proceeds to buy the infrastructure equipment, services and equipment. Generally speaking, it's a, uh, and by the way, the loan is from a Chinese policy bank, of which there are four major ones. Um, the loan proceeds are used to essentially hire Chinese contract uh, companies with Chinese laborers who come in to build the project. And then from the operations of the project, the revenues are to pay back the loan. When you have a project that costs a fair amount of money and the revenues anticipated from that project are much less than either anticipated or hoped for, then you have that kind of for situation. It's very much like borrowing money from the bank here and not being able to pay for it, the remedy is foreclosure. And that's what has happened in at least one major well-publicized project in uh, Sri Lanka. There may be another one, an airport, pro that was a mm. port project, there may be a, an airport project that goes similar and that's caused pushback from a number of countries in, in Asia, um, as well as Southeast, as well as South Asia and uh, in Africa. Well, those two problems uh, that, that we've talked about, one is the pushback on, on you know, the Chinese who, who wind up owning the project mm -hmm. through their business style on this. And the other, um, the other that um, you know, is, is kind of troublesome is the, is the lack of coordination among the private interests that are involved under the general umbrella. So what that says to me is corruption. Um, and these things, you know, may, may offer opportunities for the individual players to do corrupt deals. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll discuss that too on the 25th. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I, I want to stop now because, because there's miles to go before we sleep, maybe a whole world of miles to go. And this will be a very interesting panel. Some people think this is going to be the most interesting panel in Barina's program. What do you think, Jerry? <laughs> Well, with Jay, you as moderator, it has to be. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay, Brina, what do you think of Jerry and the panel? What do you think <laughs> of the program in general? How important is this program to you, to us, you know, and, to, and for that matter, to the connection between the two countries, the U.S. and China? I think I find the perfect panels <laughs> for, for the right topic. So, um, as you said, this is um, uh, America may not be in that round, but I hope that the panel will also address how we can be involved in. Yeah, the uh, yeah. bottom line is that <clears throat> this, you know, it is a uh, visionary. Uh, if, if carried out in the way the vision would suggest, it could be the biggest thing that has ever happened for China since, mm -hmm. since the 14th century anyway. <clears throat> and and <clears throat> America should learn from what China is doing. That sounds like the table is turned, but the table is turned. America should learn from what China but it, is doing. But the, the world is wrong, so the it will come back. Wrong. Well, that's not what <laughs> Thomas Friedman said, but hey, that's okay. Well, one of the other things you might mention <laughs> that might be discussed is, in fact, what is the response of other countries, including the United States, including the, the recently enacted Build Act that is uh, directly in response to the BRI initiative. So we can discuss that oh, perhaps. Oh, gee whiz, I'm getting so excited about this program. <laughs> Tell them again how they can sign up. Tell yes. them again the message you want to leave with them in this discussion. I hope, I hope everybody will um, find a time to come to, especially afternoon panel. Jay will be there to moder moder moderate it. Um, the, the website that you can learn about this program uh, is 2019 US Hong Kong uh, US HK China dot Eventbrite dot com. Yeah, or Hakba. Oh, okay. Hakba, Hakba <laughs> for the name of the organization that'll find yeah. the Eventbrite. It'll find yeah. it'll find yeah. the Hong information. Hong Kong there. Business Association. Yeah, Hakba. Jerry, you always somehow get the last word. Why don't you take the last word now? Come and participate in the conference. It is going to be interesting. And as Barina indicated, th there are two parts of it. One is to look at a whole U.S.-China trade situation and whether you, whatever you call it, a war, a conflict, or whatever, the really critical issues. And, and Hawaii is involved, at least indirectly, um, if not more, in all of that. And we do have a short-term as well as a long-term interest in all of that. And the second part is, is different subject matters. BRI is one of them, but there are other aspects too. And that kind of fills out the broader set of relationships with China. Trade is a big focus in the morning, but then the broader set of implications that go in many cases like BRI beyond China um, are, are of interest. So it'll be a very well-rounded program. And I think that, quite frankly, the Hakba is to be you know, really commended for bringing this kind of discussion with this kind of breadth and expertise, as you said, from both Hong Kong as well as from the U.S. mainland uh, to participate in this. And this is, this is pretty, uh, pretty powerful for Hawaii. Thank you, Brina Poon, for putting Thank the program you. on. This is very important to Hawaii. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, Brina Poon and Thanks, uh, Jerry Sumita. Aloha. Thank you. Guys. Aloha.